So guys what if Nato was god of thunderclap and Kuroka as slave movie? A yell could be heard throughout the house making several people jump up in their sleep, before they realized that it was just those of the Nazir home going though their usual morning ritual. Several people fell back and decided to get some shut eye as they themselves had to get ready for work within the hour. The house in question was more akin to a small manor with three floors. A large backyard, and a lawn. Most people didn't bat an eye at this since the construction didn't take that long and they had bought out houses that no one else wanted, of course considering that most of the people didn't even remember what had happened was a bonus to the inhabitants of the house, you see the reason that they didn't remember was because of the simple reason that the house belonged to devils, specifically the devils of the Gremory clan and their servants. The kitchen was currently occupied by one person. A beautiful tall tanned skin white haired young woman with a slim yet shapely figure that made her e cup breasts pop out and gold green eyes. She has a rabbit tail and rabbit ear shaped horns that she allowed out while in the comfort of her own home. She wore a long sleeve French made outfit, white stockings, and a pair of black boots. As she lifted up her lattel to taste the food, she heard the thundering of feet as they came down the stairs, while a servant of the house she was actually one of the two, rooks, of her king and master. Looking from her vantage, she saw four figures round the corner. It was her master and her fellow, Peerage, members, Mio Gremory, Nonaka Yuki, Nonaka Kurumi, and Himejima Naruto. Mio was the most beautiful girl in her school, long crimson hair reaching her waist and pulled into two pigtails on the side, leaving a considerable amount out and pink eyes. At 16 years old, she has been noted for having a distinctly slender yet curvaceous figure with enormous. Bouncy D cup breasts and sizable buttocks, a white sailor uniform that has a black collar and black cuffs that has white horizontal stripes. An orange colored tie hang from the edges of her collar. A short black skirt that has a single white stripe. Long black socks that has a red colored ribbon around her upper thigh. And a pair of maroon colored shoes, around her neck she wore a black choker. Due to her nature as a high class devil and need to complete contracts and the like, she became president of the student council. She was the king of her peerage and was quite powerful when it came to fire magic as well as her own familial magic of gravity, being the last descendant of the Rain Clan. When it came to her personality, Mio could be quite sweet, but could easily become a Sundare when it came to her most faithful servant and one who had been by her side for years. Yuki is a beautiful young woman with a slim yet endowed C cup build with a far more notable ass than her rival Mio. Light blue. Shoulder length hair that has a longer portion of her hair put into a braid on the left side of her face tied into a single braid. As well as a single long strang of hair, yellow eyes. Wearing the same uniform as Mio, only her socks stopped just below her knees with a small white strip at the top. Over her shoulder she had a Bakken case, it was only fitting as she was the vice captain of the Kendo team, she was the only knight of Mio's. Considering her SS with a sword as well as her magical abilities with wind she couldn't be stopped when it came to cutting power, even with a Bakken. Yuki was quite open about her feelings on everything and could be quite open when it came to the matter of in relationships. Next was Yuki's little sister and Mio's only, Bishop. Kurumi was surprisingly close in stature to her sister in not only cup size. But ass size as well blue violet hair tied up in a ponytail most of the time using a white scrunchie and yellow eyes just like her sister. She wore the same uniform as her sister and Mio, but instead of socks she wore white pantyhose. Kurumi was a member of the track team. Kurumi was the baby brat of the group and was easily the one who got annoyed easily. She was also almost always next to her sister's side. Finally was Himejima Naruto, currently the only male in the house. He stood at 510 with muscle that his sisters liked on him very much. Black shaggy looking hair with his bangs that hung in the middle of his face being blonde. Dark blue eyes, wearing his school uniform of charcoal black slacks a white button-up shirt. And a charcoal black blazer, and black shoes, over his shoulder he had a case similar to Yuki's. Seeing as how he was not only a member of the team, but was the regional male champion and was in the top 10 when it came to national ranking, Naruto actually had quite an important job when it came to the peerage. As he was Mio's, queen, her right hand as it were, he was charismatic and quite easy to get along with. He was kind and a bit of a joker, but he was always there for his loved ones. Mio Sama, Naruto Sama, Yuki san, Kurumi chan, good morning, said Zest bowing. Morning Zest san, hey Zest, morning, hey Zest chan, came the four different replays. I take it Maria san is still sleeping, said Zest with a small smile. Mio rubbed her head, 
that lazy succubus won't be up for a while thanks to Naruto-kun banging her brains out last night, said Mio looking at her, queen. Almost as if to give him a stink eye. M. Mio-san you can't blame Naruto-sama for what that degenerate girl did, said Kurumi with a blush on her face. Naruto laughed. It's not my fault she sunk into my room last night after her rather long contract, it was a full moon last night and you know how succubi get on a full moon Mio-chan, said Naruto. Mio puffed out her cheeks and glared at Naruto, you didn't have to have with her, yelled Mio. I agree with Nazir, Naruto-kun, you could have come and had your way with me last night, the only reason I didn't sleep with him last night is because I was still sore from my own session with him from two days ago, said Yuki. Nne chan how can you speak like that? It's so, unbecoming yelled Kurumi with a heavy blush on her cheeks. Yuki gave her sister an impassive look, didn't you make out with him in his room the other day? Nay sama that's between me and Naruto-kun, yelled Yuki. Mio blushed in rage, that's not what I meant and you know it Yuki, yelled Mio. Zest shook her head at the antics of the foursome, dispute Mio being the official master of the peerage. All the girls basically belong to Naruto mind, body and soul. Despite herself only being in the peerage, for a year the rabbit demon could say that she loved Naruto with all her being. All of the girls loved Naruto in their own way, in fact once he obtained the rank of high class devil and gained his own, peerage, she planned to join him as his, rook. Mio knew this and already gave Zest her blessing to do so. It also didn't hurt matters that not a one of the girls had been a virgin longer than a month after joining the peerage with the only ones left being Mio since she was quite happy to give Naruto oral and boob jobs, at least until she was ready and Kurmi was content with just making out with him on occasion, one. Was a rather open concept to devils and it was even quite common for the stronger devils males and females alike to have harems in the dozens, at last count the devil with the largest harem was the great king Bael, at last count his harm was 243 members and he had dozens of children. As strange as their peerage was Zest wouldn't trade it for the world. Will you four be off to school, don't forget your lunches asked Zest. Hi, we're already late as it is, said Mio as she grabbed her bag along with the others. Zest nodded and bowed to the three, very well, have a present day everyone, said Zest. The foursome left the house to get the day going. Zest smiled as she made her way to the living room, she still had a lesson plan to do for the local kids. Location. Tokyo, Shinjuku District Place, Hajigazaka Academy, Front Entrance. Time. 0830 Hajigazaka Academy was a private school in South Tokyo that saw several people go though the gates and many became prominent figures of society, from businessmen to politicians, to star atlas, the school itself sat on top of a small hill. As the three walked into the school grounds people began to speak about them, Naruto and Yuki mostly ignored it, but Mio and Kurumi couldn't easily ignore what was being said around them, especially when she was more physically open with Naruto when it came to their relationship. Look it's the royals, said one girl, Okami-sama Naruto-san is so handsome. Damn Yuki-san is beautiful, Mio-sama, marry me, yelled a girl. Damn that bitch Yuki hogging all that man meat and that was what they heard every day. Honestly if it wasn't for Rias coming to the human and looking to get a degree in political science, Mio would have kept her own peerage in the underworld, it was honestly the will of the clan elders that saw the younger generation going out more and more into the human world to understand it, Mio felt it was a waste odf time to engage in such pointless activities, but she knew better then to disappoint the elders. Mio sighed, I am heading to the student council room, I have to finish some paperwork. Would you like me to come with you Mio-sama? asked Naruto. Mio looked at Naruto, don't you have to prep the team for our upcoming matches with Kuo Academy? asked Mio. Kurumi sighed, it won't matter if Naruto-san preps the team or not he could single-handedly handle the entire male team himself. Yuki sighed, just let him come with you Mio, I am sure that you can find something to have him help you with, said Yuki. Mio sighed, fine, follow me then Naruto. I'll need some muscle to help me with some boxes, said Mio. Hi Mio-sama, said Naruto following after her, as they broke off to head to the student council room Yuki and Kurumi went their own way to class, each with their own thoughts. To bad I am not in charge of the disciplinary squad, they are defiantly going to make out in her office, said Kurumi. Yuki raised her hand and chopped her sister's head, Kurumi grabbed her head in pain. Leave it alone Rumi-chan, 
Besides you're going to be making out with him at home tonight anyway, if only I could convince you to have a threesome with us then we could have some real fun, said Yuki smirking at her sister. When she wanted to Yuki could be a real pervert, Kurumi's face burned up, nay sama, yelled Kurumi catching the attention of several people. The student council was gifted the council by the director and principal, it was actually pretty large, with each class having a rep, a vice rep, and a secretary, the year rep, the disciplinary community, and other positions the council was quite large, in an offshoot chamber was Mio's office that she was allowed for private use when it came to paperwork and the like, currently it wasn't used for that. Mio was pressed against the desk with her lips locked with Naruto's. His right hand roughly groping her exposed breast, Mio moaned into the kiss as she ran her hands up Naruto's abs. It wasn't uncommon for Mio to become jealous of the other members of her peerage since they were more intimate with her, queen, than she was. But as a pure blood devil she was still at the whim of the council and like Rias had to keep her virginity intact until such a time she was either powerful enough to defy the council or until a husband was chosen for her, her only real saving grace was that she didn't have the same stock as Rias did and was only a branch member of the family that was tentative at best as Rias could lose her heiress status to any of her cousins if she proved to be ineffective. Currently that wasn't on Mio's mind however as she surrendered herself to the pleasure of Naruto's talented hands and lips, Mio pulled back for the kiss her tongue out and her drool connecting to Naruto with a long thin bridge before it broke. Naruto-kun, I want, more, said Mio, I know Mio-sama, said Naruto, but you must keep your virtue intact. Chan, call me Mio-chan when we're alone said Mio as she gripped his hair. Naruto smirked as he bent down to her neck and breathed on it. This scent shivers up Mio's spine, by the Satans he knew how to drive her nuts. Oh she was most likely going to watch as he broke zest tonight. Mio's peerage acted like such submissive sluts when it came to Naruto that it wasn't even funny, especially when it came to their kinks and such, an example of this was Yuki. Yuki was a butt slut. She loved taking it up her ass to the point where if Naruto ed her she would be mind broken before her second orgasm or before Naruto even came, Satan's she was making herself wet. I hope I am not interrupting anything, came a seductive voice with a teasing tone. Mio and Naruto were brought out of their tryst as they looked at the desk. On the desk was a small magical circle that had the hologram of a woman. She looked to be the same age Mio, she was quite beautiful. Ravishing even long crimson red hair that was even deeper shade than Mio's was. Blue-green eyes that seemed almost hypnotic and promised things that made you want to devote everything to her, mile-long legs that she wasn't shy about showing off, a nice rounded ass and a pair of large D-borderline E-cup breasts, honestly were it not for the fact that he didn't like her Naruto was sure that he would have bedded her already, that and her fiancé was a flaming piece of crap, she wore the clothes of the school she currently attended, Kuo Academy in Kuo just west of Tokyo. Mio blushed and screamed. Naruto pulled away from Mio as she fixed herself. Naruto fell to knee and bowed his head as Mio fixed herself. Once she was presentable Mio took a seat. Sorry about that Rias Idoko, had I known you were going to call I would have been more presentable, said Mio. Rias chuckled, it's fine Mio, this wasn't intended to be more than a social call, although I am a bit surprised that you go so far with Naruto-kun. Akano won't be happy about this, you know how possessive that girl can get, said Rias. Naruto frowned, with all due respect Rias sama what I do is none of Nei sama's concern, said Naruto. Rias looked at Naruto with a frown, despite what you may think Naruto kun Akeno loves you as do I, you represent the house of Gremory and though you are not one of my servants I still love you as if you were my own cute little servant in spite of what you think about me, said Rias. Naruto balled up his fist, Mio sama, Rias sama please excuse me, I have to get to class, said Naruto. Naruto rose to his feet and left the room. Mio looked at Naruto's retreating form and sighed. Rias you know that Naruto still hasn't forgive you, said Mio. Rias sighed. I had to make a choice. I don't regret it and Akano doesn't hold it against me. I wish Naruto-kun would drop this silly grudge he has with me, said Rias. Mio narrowed her eyes. We both know why you saved Naruto over his mother Rias, even when he begged you to save her. Rias closed her eyes, I have no desire to get into this argument cousin. I was simply calling to check upon my favorite cousin, said Rias. Mio thought about it before nodding, I know this Rias, but do try to remember that as attached to your servants as you or I am just as attached to mine, said Mio. Very well, said Rias, until I see you again cousin. 
Rias cut the connection leaving Mio to her thoughts. She looked out the window of her office, as she did so her beautiful pink eyes took on a dark red hue as she allowed her control to slip. The small statue that was on her desk began to deform, before it was seemingly crushed into a ball. Mio snapped out of it and shook her head. Sometimes I hate that bitch, said Mio getting up and making sure she was presentable before she left to go to class. Rias leaned back in her chair as she finished her talk with her cousin and her queen. Honestly sometimes she wondered what would have happened had she kept Naruto as her queen, instead of trading Naruto to Mio for her unused piece. Once she had completed the trade she turned Akano into a devil that same day, would he have been strong enough to help her with her problem? Of course with his sacred gear it wouldn't have been an issue, considering that it was a on the level of a pseudo Longinus, very few gears could boast that level of power. Rias shook her heads, at the time she didn't know about his gear, but. That's in the past Rias, let it go, thought Rias she was brought out of her thoughts as a cup of tea was placed in front of her. Looking up Rias saw her, queen, her best friend, and Naruto's older sister. Hamejira Akano, the ultimate sadist and brokon. Akano had told her in confidence that she wanted her first time to be Naruto cheating on his girlfriend with her. As strange as it sounded Rias believed that Akano could pull it off. Akano was a Yamato Nadashiko a traditional Japanese beauty. It didn't hurt that unlike Rias' own more Western European looks Akano was a native of Japan, she stood at 56, with a body that was even more seductive than Rias or even Mio's, with large G-cup breasts, long tan legs, long black hair tied in a long ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs with two strands sticking out from the top and sloping backward, with an orange ribbon keeping it in place and violet eyes, she wore the same uniform as Rias. Everything okay Rias Chan? Asked Akano, Rias took her cup and took a sip, I spoke with my cousin just now, stated the crimson-haired princess of ruin, deciding to rip the bandage off. Was Ototo there? Asked Akano holding the serving tray in front of her. He was, and he's still angry at me, said Rias looking out the window. Akano bit her lip, Rias, said Akano, let me talk to my brother. I think I can make him see the truth. Rias smiled, you can relax Akano, as I told Naruto and I'll tell you, I love you because while you are my servant you are a member of the house of Gremory, even if he hates me, I still love him like a little brother, besides I told you that I would take the blame upon my shoulders, said Rias finishing her tea. Akano opened her lips to speak, but quickly closed it, of course Rias. Come Akano, we need to get to class, said Rias, Akano nodded and followed after her best friend. Location. Tokyo, Shinjuku District Place, Hajigazaka Academy, Academy Roof. Time. 1200 Naruto leaned back on the wall of the roof as he opened his lunch, normally he would be eating with Mio and the others, but Mio, Yuki, and Kurumi all somehow got lunch detention with Sakazaki Sensei, if it wasn't for the fact that none of them could sense any ill intent from him Naruto would have been sure that that was trying to set the girls up for something, Naruto opened his lunchbox and began to eat his rich. So Naruto Chi how's it going? Asked a boy sitting in front of him. Naruto looked up from his rice at his best friend Takagawa Yuhiro. Yuhiro was a pretty average guy. He stood shoulder to shoulder with Naruto in terms of height. Green hair that appears to be a little slick in the back with strands of his hair showing off his forehead and purple colored eyes. He took a seat next to Naruto. What do you want Lars I am not in the mood for your little shadow games, said Naruto. Yuhiro's eyes narrowed for a second as they became slitted, don't get get to full of yourself Himejima, ill you the moment you become useless to me, said Lars abandoning all pretense of who he was. There's the double agent of the demon lord's faction and the modern demon faction that I know and hate, smirked Naruto. The underworld was honestly a really, really ed up place. Considering how many factions actually made up the entirety of the underworld it was no wonder it was a melting pot that saw battles raging between factions with a thin veil of peace. The entity of the underworld could probably span a several earths. But no one really knew how large it was, with not only the devils. Demons, shades, lesser beings, and the like it was a wonder that anything got done. Honestly Naruto didn't want to think of the politics involved currently with the underworld factions, all he knew was that the demon lords and modern demon factions didn't have anyone nearly as strong as Sirzex to fall back on. Mio and the others knew about Naruto's dealing with Lars, but made sure to keep it within the family as far as they were concerned. Despite the demon's threats Lars and Naruto actually had a pretty good relationship, at least when they weren't trying to each other, 
and nowadays it was more or less glorified full-out sparing, at last count it was 106 to 84 in Naruto's favor, but considering that Lars was a high D, low C ranked threat in Naruto's book was nothing to sneeze as as Naruto only considered himself a low C ranked fighter, too. So what do you want Lars? Asked Naruto, something interesting hit my information network just a few days ago, said Lars. Naruto looked at him, what is it? Asked Naruto interested. Rumblings in the demon lord faction, a lord has vanished, a high profile one at that, said Lars leaning back as he pulled out a cup of noodles from his pocket space. Naruto looked at Lars, what do you mean a lord went missing? Asked Naruto taking a bite of fish. It's just as I said, a lord went missing, his name is Zolgir, he had major influence in the demon faction, he was extreme by even the king of lord standards, said Lars. But why did he vanish? Asked Naruto, no clue, I can tell you that his disappearance is nothing good, all I know is that you might want to watch out for Mio and the rest of your women if the rumblings on the MDF are anything to with. What do they ha? Started Naruto, the door to the roof opened, two girls walked on the roof giggling about something or other as they turned and looked. Oh look it's Himejima-san and his friend, Yuhiro laughed as he clapped Naruto's shoulder, somehow I am always getting left in your shadow Naruto-chi, but I guess that's the price of fame, El sued Yuhiro. Naruto gave a small laugh of his own as he listened the girls came up and began to talk to them, all the while the information was still inside of his head, why would Lars bring this to his attention? Location. Tokyo, Shinjuku District Place, Hajigazaka Academy, Kendo Club Dojo. Time. 1720 The members of the Kendo Club etched as Naruto and Yuki battled with clashes that could be heard throughout the dojo. Naruto jumped backwards of Yuki's attack only to counter attack as she parried the blow upwards. Yuki saw her chance to end the fight. Your open Naruto kun, as she lowered herself and went for a thrust. Naruto let go of his Bakken and spun to the left, grabbing the Bakken with his right and and going for a slashing motion on Yuki's exposed neck, stopping just a hair shy of knocked her out. Dead, said Naruto. Yuki went back to her starting position and bowed to Naruto. Naruto returned the bow as the other members of the club clapped for the duo. Naruto and Yuki turned to the others. All right, you lot, we have a match against Kuo next week. Now I don't know about you, but I really don't want to be defeated by them. They may have only allowed males on the team as of last year when it was converted to a co ed school, but some of their members are quite formidable, said Naruto. No kidding, Himejima san, that kid Yuto Kiba has been named as the strongest male in the region, said a male member. Naruto smirked at him, you're forgetting that while he is ranked one in the region, I am ranked one in the nationals, said Naruto. The others nodded as Naruto began to pair them up for sparring practice. As he did, Sayuki watched him closely. While she had the smallest emotional range of all of his lovers she was also the one who could read him the easiest. She knew that something had been bothering him today. Especially as he had refused a quickie earlier during lunch, Naruto normally didn't turn them down if she offered considering that he had a high libido and that she was the only one who was willing to sat him during school hours, not only that but his fighting was a lot more aggressive than normal, Naruto didn't like to counter fight or do defense, but he was easily one of the best counter fighters she knew in that regard he had been out of it since this morning. Yuki-chan, said Naruto, Yuki was brought out of her thoughts by her captain and lover, Hi Naruto-kun. Take five laps around the track and take Hitomi-san and Jin-kun with you, said Naruto. Yuki nodded, Hi Naruto-kun, said Yuki as she took her group and began to run. After an hour of work the kendo group finished their workout and hit the showers, after finishing and changing the team left with Yuki and Naruto meeting Kurumi and Mio. The group began to walk home, all of them not even winded from their activities, they arrived at the train station fairly quickly, once they set foot on the train they all rested with Naruto standing in front of the girls once they arrived at the station it was a five minute walk to their home. Naruto opened the door, we're home, said Naruto as they took off their shoes. Not even a second later a figure flew out of nowhere and tackled Naruto. Naruto-sama. Maria missed you, the girl who was on Naruto was Mio's, Rook, and younger half-sister. Maria. Maria was a petite beautiful girl with long silver hair and purple eyes in her human form most of the time with B-cup breasts, purple eyes, and very mischievous smirk on her, she wore a black dress that has white frills keyhole on her collar, black leggings, and boots that have a purple hearts on them, if any of the girls could be considered Naruto's most frequented lover it would be Maria, 
it was actually Maria who had been the first girl to have with Naruto. Hello Maria, said Naruto. Maria smirked as she locked lips with Naruto in an intense kiss, since Maria was a succubus her kisses and aura were damn near irresistible to an average weak-willed human. Luckily Naruto was far from weak-willed, wrapping his arms around Maria he pulled her into his lap, Mio glared at her younger sister. What would your ka-sansei Maria? yelled Mio Maria pulled away from Naruto and smirked at her sister, Shed ask me why I am not a bigger slut and why I don't have like 100 or so lovers or kids, said the white-haired girl before sticking out her tongue. Mio and Karemi both blushed and sputtered in outrage and embarrassment despite the fact that currently three of the five females in the house were sleeping with Naruto, and Maria was not the quit type when she was really in the mood. Maria, hentai, yelled Mio and Kurumi, speaking of which how is Shelly Asama, I didn't see her in class today, said Yuki. Remember that Ka-san is arch succubes and leading member of our race, she was called into a conference with the other arch succubi and the queen herself. Mio looked at her sister and got a look back, while not powerhouses by any starch of the imagination. The succubi nation as it was called was pretty powerful in its own right. If you included their sister race in Vila, the half-human flame wielders. Then politically the succubi were easily in the range of the lesser religions and supernatural groups like the Lycon Pax or the vampire clans in terms of power. They had more state secrets and skeletons on high-profile individuals. It was even rumored that the Queen Succubus herself had seduced and bedded Michael himself. Mio knew from her lessons with her adopted mother that the race itself was closer to extension than anything with only a million succubi the world over, in that entire number there were only fifty arch succubi and two princess succubi and a queen, that queen was Lady Morrigan Ainsland, the strongest succubus in the underworld aside from the original succubus and the first Lucifer's wife Lilith, one. Why would Morrigan call a meeting of this magnitude? asked Mio. Maria shrugged her shoulder, no idea, mother will tell us once she returns from the meeting, no need to worry Mio-sama, besides Lucia ne sama is a powerful mistress succubus and will protect Ka-sama if anything unwanted happens. I hope everyone is ready to eat, Maria and I made duck tonight, said Zest walking into the living room. Naruto stood up and gave Zest a kiss that almost zapped her strength from her, making her weak in the knees, before they could go any further Naruto felt something ping him in the back of his mind, he sighed in annoyance. Sorry girls I have to go, I've been summoned, said Naruto with a small smile. Is it a regular or something? asked Yuki with narrowed eyes. Naruto rubbed his cheek while giving a nervous chuckle, it's Hasegawa sensei, said Naruto. Mio, Yuki, and Kurumi all instantly grow annoyed at the name of the client. As far as the contracts went each of them had their own regular customers. One of Naruto's just so happened to be the school nurse, Hasegawa Chisato, while Yuki and Mio were the most popular girls since they were both good looking and why, neither had anything on Chisato, aside from being the most popular teacher on campus she tended to spend a lot of time filling in as a surrogate writing teacher, considering that only four people took her class this year and it was only for one day out of the week she had plenty of free time. Mio lost her annoyance and sighed, very well make sure to return quickly, I don't want you out all night, said Mio. Naruto nodded and he activated his magic and teleported out. Location. Tokyo, Shinjuku District Place, Hasegawa Apartment. Time. 1900 Naruto appeared in the studio apartment of Hasegawa Sensei, it was pretty nice all things considered, Naruto looked at the couch and saw a new 72-inch TV, a new TV stand, a few game systems, as well as a new computer. You got here quicker than expected, came a voice from the room. Naruto looked and saw that it was Chisato. Chisato is an stunningly attractive woman with Y hip length black hair that has bangs hanging on the right side with two A hogs, green eyes, a mole under her left eye. She stood at about 58 with large DD cup breasts wearing a green knitted sleeveless turtleneck, a tight black mini skirt along with her cross garter motif stockings, red round glasses, one earring on her left ear her signature white lab coat was currently hanging up. Naruto gave a bow, good evening sensei, said Naruto. Chisato smiled at Naruto, I told you before Naruto-kun when it's you and me and I am not wearing my lab coat call me Chisato, said the alluring beauty as she walked over and hugged Naruto. Naruto had to reset his stronger devil urges to throw Chisato onto the couch and make her one of his women, Chisato had been a clint of Naruto's for about six months now, she would call him up at least once a week, Sometimes she wouldn't even do it in contract form, 
if she wasn't so kind and caring and if Naruto were a weaker man. Chisato let go of Naruto. I needed some help with setting up my new stuff, said Chisato. Why did you buy new stuff Chisato? Asked Naruto. The beauty moved a stray stand of hair behind her ear. This had the unfortunate effect of exposing her neck to her. By the Satans this woman was ing him. One of the girls wasn't going to be walking right in the morning at this rate. My stuff was almost four years old, I figured it was time for an upgrade. We better get to work then, otherwise we'll be here all night, said the dark-haired male. The duo set to work and completed the task in about two hours, the entire time this was happening Chisato would bend, move or touch Naruto in such a way that his libido was flaring so damn much that he had to use all his willpower to not just take her as she was. Once the duo finished they sat on the couch and turned on the TV, before long both ended up sitting down and just watching TV without realizing it, before either knew it they fell asleep on the couch. 3. Naruto awoke when he felt a ping from his cell phone. Looking around the darkened room he saw that Chisato was laying on his lap, Naruto pulled out his phone and winced, it was almost midnight, while he would never sleep with anyone behind the girl's back even at the encouraging of Maria, and zest more laid-back attitude when it came to, he would never stoop so low, that wouldn't stop Mio, Yuki and Kurumi from outright giving him hell. He pulled out his phone and paled as he saw the number of texts and missed calls he had, yeah he was ed and not in a good way. Mio and the others are going to me, said Naruto. Um Naruto-kun, said Chisato opening her eyes and rubbing them, what time is it? It's almost midnight, I have to go sensei, said Naruto. Alright, be careful out there, said Chisato as she kissed Naruto on the forehead and began to whisper something. Naruto wasn't sure what it was, but he felt something latch onto his magic, he nodded to Chisato and ran out of her apartment. As Naruto rushed down the street he was trying to figure out how he was going to spin this so he didn't get in trouble by the girls. He was halfway home when he felt a magic barrier go up. Naruto stopped and frowned at this, he looked around and noticed several lesser demons. Not even in a category like Devil or Yuki, the lost kind as they were refereed to, not even strong enough to make it into the F ranks of Naruto's personal bingo book, Naruto counted them out and counted six of them in all. They all took the gaze of regular human thugs, but their stench made Naruto want to puke, Naruto rolled up his sleeves, and allowed lightning to spark on his fingers flaring just a bit of his power. This stopped everyone from moving any closer, weaklings, thought Naruto. You assholes picked the wrong territory, the wrong day, and definitionally the wrong guy. Well at least I got an excuse as to why I am late, said Naruto. Damn I didn't think we'd catch a servant of Gremory inside of our little web, said the apparent leader of the group, he was smaller than the others, but he could be considered borderline F-ranked. Before we get started, does anybody want to leave? asked Naruto as a smirk appeared on his face. The demons charged at Naruto all with the intent to accept for the leader who seemed to be a little bit smarter than the others, that was fine by Naruto, he liked fighting one on one as it was, Naruto pulled his fist back and fathered lightning in his right hand. Multi-lighting javelin yelled Naruto throwing his hand out, unleashing 13 bolts of lightning. All 13 hit the mark instantly destroying the demons, but the leader was protected by the barrier, the leader spat on the ground as he let his barrier sizzle and die, it took a lot more power than he expected to maintain his defenses so he wouldn't die and while he was already down to half of his power, Naruto was still at the height of his power. Damn you're a lot stronger than I thought, said the leader. You know that you're in the territory of Lady Mio Gremory, as her queen, it's my job to defend said territory from all rouge elements, as I know every supernatural being within the Shinjuku district that are registered to live here, you're not one of them, said Naruto. The leader smirked, brilliant deduction, but I am more than a match for a low-class devil, yelled the leader as his skin ripped apart and he grew in size, he now stood at about 10 feet tall and packed with muscle, a single horn was stood out like a zip on his head. Naruto snorted, great, a ing oni, and not a very strong one either, said Naruto. The oni laughed, your little lighting blast won't be able to hurt me. Naruto held out his right hand as a green glow appeared, normally I wouldn't use this on a weakling like you, but it's been a long time since I used it in a while I feel that I've neglected my partner, let's this idiot, Brynhildr, yelled Naruto as his forearm was covered in silver gauntlet with a large curved great sword in his hand, one. The sword pulsed at the center where a green orb seemed to float, for a moment the oni was sure that the thing was talking to the brat, the oni roared as he charged at Naruto, 
Naruto snorted as his right eye glowed green as he swung his sword, the oni stopped for a moment, before he looked down at his chest, a green cut that spanned the length of his chest was there. Disappear into the void and repent for the sin of underestimating me, said Naruto. The oni roared in pain as his body seemed to implode on itself before he varnished leaving nothing, not even blood. That was a waste of our time and magic Naruto-san, came a voice from the sword, I was hoping that he would have been at least a challenge, you didn't even have to use a real attack. Naruto smiled, I am sorry Hilda-san, I thought you'd enjoy the excursive. Next time you summon me Naruto ITD better be worth our time, even by your standards he was barely worth the effort, said Hilda before the sword and gauntlet vanished. Naruto chuckled as he thought of his partner, banishing shift was a really powerful gear, when he first unlocked it he had no idea about Brynhildr sealed inside or how to use it beyond a simple sword, thanks to his training with Brynhildr he had been able to unlock two of her movies and could unleash banishing shift at different levels of intensity, what he did just a moment ago was his lowest setting. I better report this, said Naruto as he summoned a small circle on his hand, out of his hand came a hologram of Mio and she was only wearing a towel. Where the hell are you Naruto-kun? Lizn't Mio-sama this is important said Naruto trying hard not to stare at her beautiful body. Mio's rage quickly left her face at his tone, what happened? I just got attacked by some unranked trash from the Demon Lord faction, not to mention that Lars told me some pretty interesting information today, said Naruto as he relied what Lars told him to Mio. Hum interesting, had I known about this I would have dealt with this quickly, said Mio. Naruto gave a small chuckle, that. S what I am here for Mio-sama, it wasn't a problem said Naruto, the fact that such low level begins managed to influence your territory worries me a bit. And you think that were the target? Asked Mio, according to my sources, I am willing to bet a year's worth of ramen on it, said Naruto. Very well, return home. Oh and as punishment you are not allowed to sleep with any of the girls until Saturday and you can't jack off, said Mio smirked. Naruto looked horrified, wait Mio, that's not fair, said Naruto. Mio laughed. Neither is sleeping with Sensei, enjoy your blue balls Naruto-kun, said Mio as she cut the connection. Naruto stood there frozen in shock, it was only Tuesday, he had to wait four days before he could get his rocks off. KK! yelled Naruto to the heavens, location, Kuo Town. Place. Akino's home time, 0250, oh. Yes. I am coming yelled Akano as her back arched and her toes curled as she gripped her covers in Eustacey as the knot that was inside of her broke as her juices flooded from her core and onto her queen-sized bed. Akano lay panting as she removed her toy from herself and raised it to her lips, before sucking it clean, imaging that it was her little brother that was doing this to her, just thinking about her brother did this to her, most days Akano keep her mind off of Naruto, how was he doing? Was he eating well? Was he healthy? Was Mio treating him right? These questions pledged her constantly, it was one of the reasons that she wore the mask of the ultimate sadist, to hide the pain in her heart, even from herself. Akano finished cleaning her toy and rolled over allowing it to fall to the floor. For most of the day her body had been on fire, it was a good thing that Rias gave Akano the night off, especially considering that she had spent nearly four hours bringing herself to orgasm after orgasm with different methods, the last one had been quite vanilla for her tastes, but it got the job done, while she had been able to please herself she still wouldn't be able to sleep tonight, not until she heard his voice. Akano picked up her phone, it was nearly 3 in the morning, luckily she could function with only 3 hours of sleep, she didn't bother to open her contacts and just hit the 2 button for speed dial. Please be awake Naruto Auto, I need to hear your voice, thought Akano biting her thumb. The phone rang for a minute, before Naruto picked it up. Oni-san? It's almost 3 in the morning, is everything alright? Asked Naruto, he sounded alert, that meant that he was doing some devil work. Akano smiled, hi, everything is fine Naruto, I just needed to hear your voice before going to sleep, it's been weeks since we talked and almost 4 months since we've seen each other, said Akano. You right, it has been a while, how about we rectify that, are you free this Saturday? Asked Naruto. Akino's eyes widened, hi. I am free, in fact, it's my off day, said exclaimed the Yamato Nadashiko, happy for a chance to spend time with her brother. Great. How about we met up at Kuo Norther Plaza, at that one the clock fountain you like so much and make a day of it, said Naruto. Akano couldn't help the smile that spread on her face, of course. 
I feel better now, said Akano, good night Naruto Otto, I love you. I love you too Akano Oni-san, good night, said Naruto as he hung up. Akano wanted to squeal, even as she fell backwards onto the bed and snuggled into her sheets as she began to dream up ways to seduce her younger brother. Once in her dreams her thoughts went into alive with him, a house in Lilith, kids, a high-ranking position in the military, later a seat on the council, and kinky bondage orgies. Akino's mind was a very dangerous place to be, location, Kuo Town. Place. Northern Entertainment Plaza Time, 1300, Saturday. Naruto sighed as he stood outside of the fountain waiting for his sister to appear, he wore a white shirt with orange sleeves, blue jean pants, and boots, his hair was slicked back opposed to its normal spiky and wild look. Naruto Ototo, yelled Akano as she ran and hugged Naruto. Naruto looked at his sister and and smiled at her, she wore a pink sleeveless button-up shirt with the top three buttons undone, a purple ruffled skirt and matching vest, white stoking, a pair of high heels, a few silver bangles, and a silver heart-shaped necklace on a silver chain. Naruto let go of Akano and looked her over, Akano one san, it's been too long, said Naruto. Akano smiled at Naruto, so you ready to get our date on, said Akano. Holy crap. I knew Akano san smoking hot ass had to be giving the Pu Tang Pai up to some rich dude. What did you expect my friend? She is one of the great ladies of Kuo, although with her near perfect sizes of B102 W60 H89 centimeters, we should have expected, said Motohama in a rather creepy way. Naruto and Akano looked at the person who said this, Akano with a teasing smile, while Naruto looked at them with rage, the dude on the left had a shaved head, with thick slightly triangular eyebrows wearing a baseball shirt with the number 18 on it, and shorts, the guy on the right had pretty average black hair, wore glasses, a black shirt with some modal on it, and a pair of jeans, too. Who the hell are you two assholes? Asked Naruto stepping in front of Akano and putting his right hand in front of her low and out, as if he was her shield. Check it player. I am Matsuda and I am a bad ass that all the babes want to get with, my is the that will pierce even heaven's pussy, said the bald-headed idiot striking a pose. Naruto's left eye twitched, I might have to this kid, thought Naruto. The other boy tilted his glasses in a Kamina-esque way, and I am Motohama with my eyes I can accurately guess anything about a girl with no issues, said glasses. Akano put her hand in front of her mouth, I can't believe I am finally meeting the famous perverted trio, said Akano. Naruto looked at his sister, perverted trio? Asked Naruto. They have a bit of a reputation at our school, even with all the boys there ogling the girls and what not Matsuda-san, Motohama-san, and another boy are a cut above the rest. While many girls don't really like it, I find it somewhat enduring, said Akano. You still never introduced yourself friend, said Motohama. Naruto narrowed his eyes, if you must know I am Akino's younger brother Himejima Naruto. Brother. Yelled the duo, Akino laughed, hi, Naruto is my precious little brother, he doesn't attend Kuo and lives in Tokyo, it's only an hour or so commute by train or bus, but because my brother wants to be a politician, maybe even become prim minister someday, he takes his studies seriously, said Akino as she latched onto Naruto's arm. And what about you Akino-san? Asked Motohama. I remember hearing that Ria-san plans on going into her family business when she returns to Germany, but what about you? Akano blushed. I am hoping to settle down and be a simple housewife, said Akano as she gave a small glance at Naruto. Hey Motohama. Matsuda come back so we can tail them, called a voice. The group turned to see a girl running up to them, the girl was pretty cute. Even by human standards, even though she was on the skinny side of things, her breasts were only a size B but she appeared to be a late bloomer, golden eyes that held mishiness that could probably rival Akino's on a bad day, long messy brown hair that was pulled into braids on the sides of her head, she wore a purple shirt that was slightly too big for her, black shorts that the shirt slightly covered, and white shoes, she also wore a pair of glasses, three. Who is this? Asked Naruto looking at Akino, not sure, said Akino, I don't really keep up with the lower years aside from the preverted trio and my good friend Kaneko-chan. The girl looked at Akano and smiled, Kiryu Akia, you could say that I am the girl's greatest weapon when it comes to keeping these idiots in line, said Akia. Naruto smiled, nice to meet you Kiryu-san, said Naruto. Akia looked at Naruto as her eyes widened in shock, just looking at Naruto made the world fall away as his aura blow her clothes away leaving her naked, before the man, 
know this, beautiful creature before her. She had scanned every boy in Kuo Academy with her one-size scouter, she knew that the two biggest guys in Kuo were Issei and Saji with Kiba bringing up the rear, but none of them compared to the male before her, he was packing a bitch breaker in his pants, just his sheer size and pressure of his aura alone, not to mention the fact that she knew that he had experience made Akia cream her panties, Akia got weak in the knees before she fell backwards into Motohama and Matsuda. Yo girl you good? Asked Matsuda showing concern for his friend and fellow pervert. Akira panted, it's too much. Said Akia, what are you talking about? Asked Motohama. That's not a man before us, he's a legendary, a legendary bitch breaker. Akia nearly screamed out as she creamed herself a second time. Good thing she normally carried two extra pairs of panties with her. Motohama and Matsuda nearly dropped her as they looked at Naruto in awe, they had heard to the stories of the bitch breakers, but didn't think they would ever meet one in person, only a few were born every generation, to be in the presence of one was just awe-inspiring, it was every pervert's woman's dream and mon's nightmare to meet a bitch breaker. What are you doing out anyway, and where is Issei-san? Asked Akano putting a stop to this madness. The trio looked at Akano, after a silent talk, it was Akia who was elected to tell them. Issei got a date with a girl from some academy, we wanted to see what this chick was like, said Akia as she took off her glasses and began to wipe them, the thing is though that the girl was weird. Naruto and Akano looked at each other, Issei was one of several humans that had made the Rias and Sonas must watch list, the entire school ranged from elementary to college level education so the two girls had many to pick from when it came to peerage members, Mio wasn't too worried about finding members at the moment considering that Rias and Mio's peerages were more or less even when it came to numbers and Rias was on borrowed time. Akia she took off her glasses and began to wipe them, the thing is though that the girl was weird, said Akia. Weird how? Asked Naruto, I couldn't put my finger on any one thing, but her aura was wrong on so many different levels it's not even funny, for starters she looked like a high class girl and even acted the part, her eyes though told another story, said Akia putting her glasses back on. She's not wrong the babe Issei introduced us to, Yuma I think her name was was a total 10, no way in hell shed go to my bro, as much as I like Issei, dude's only a 6 or 7, no homo, said Matsuda. Not only that, but I when I looked at her something was wrong with my TSS, it said one thing, but her body measurements were wrong for my readings, said Motohama, 4. Interesting, said Naruto, before he turned to Akano. Akano shook her head, later, whispered Akano, well leave you three to it, we have stuff to do, it's not every day I get to hang out with my brother, said Akano. Naruto and Akano left the trio and walked away a bit before they were alone in an ally, Naruto gripped Akano by her shoulder and pushed her into the wall, before slamming his hand on the wall next to her face. Start talking Akano, said Naruto as he allowed his aura to flare. Akano shivered in fear and arousal, perhaps it would be best not to push her brother at the moment. Akano looked into her brother's eyes, she knew that while she could keep the information to herself. Rias never gave her the order to not say anything about it. However her loyalty to Rias and her love for her brother were at odds at the moment, however since technically speaking Naruto was a servant with the same rank as her, no she outranked Naruto on the simple principle that she was the queen of the heiress primary, while he was only the queen of an heiress candidate, her speaking of Rias intentions could come back to bite her in the ass but it would be easier to repair her rift with Rias, than Naruto. Very well brother, when school began this year, Kaneko chan felt a spike of power in one of the humans here, there are several supernatural beings in Kuo and we got worried someone was making a play on Rias territory, we investigated it and discovered that it was a random spike from the human Hyodo Issei, a rather average human by all accounts, except that energy spike. The human we were talking about earlier? Asked Naruto. Akano nodded. Yes. We discovered that it was energy similar to that of a sacred gear. Once we knew this Rias chose to monitor him, since the spike was random, we figured there was a chance of him never activating his powers. For a long time, we figured that he would never activate and were content to leave him be, said Akano. What does this have to do with the girl Yuma? asked Naruto. About a month ago, we caught wind of a group of fallen angels, spat Akano in rage. Naruto ignored this, you still haven't answered my question, Akano. They were interested in Hayudu san, since they weren't causing trouble and only monitoring him we had no reason to suspect a thing, at least until a week ago, when Yuma approached Issei, for the last week they've been hanging out outside of school and even at Hyodo san's home, after that we've kept a close eye on him, 
We're not sure what's going to happen, but Rias has ordered us not to interfere unless it's a dire emergency. Naruto glared at his sister, she gave you that order, but not me, said Naruto as he turned to walk away. Akano turned after him and grabbed his sleeve, Naruto Otto, please think this though, you know as well as I do that Rias, started Akano. Want do a damn thing to me, said Naruto glaring at his sister. Naruto. Pleaded Akano can we, can we just enjoy our time together, please, I don't want to fight. Naruto grit his teeth, this is just like that time Akano, the time I begged Rias to save Ka-chan and you, you just stood there, said Naruto as he ripped away from her. Akano looked at her brother's back as he left her alone in the ally, Akano fell to her knees with tears rolling down her face. Naruto, please come back, to me, cried Akano, location, Kuo Town. Place. Park time. 1859 Naruto looked around the entire plaza panting as he did so, he had been trying for the last few hours to find Issei and this girl, but realized two things he didn't know what Issei looked like and was sure that the fallen angel was masking her energy. Damn it, this is getting me nowhere, if only I could have a sign. As if the universe was listening Naruto felt it, a spike of fear, born from an instinctual desire to avoid the item at all costs, he turned to the location it had came from and realized that he wasn't too far from it, taking into his, night, speed Naruto vanished and reappeared as he looked at the two figures standing before him. The fallen angel before him was an attractive young woman with violet eyes having a slender body. She had long silky black hair down to her hips and possessed two sets black feathered wings, black, leather strap around and under her breasts, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that ran right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them, shoulder guard-like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh high heel boots. The other person who he assumed was Hyoto was an average kid who looked like he never worked out a day in his life, short spiky brown hair, with two short locks of hair behind his head, and light brown eyes, he wore a red button-up shirt that, blue jean pants. I must admit it was fun being with you, and you're a pretty good kisser, to bad I am on a timetable eyes kun otherwise id have rocked you world tonight, so please my dear boyfriend die, yelled the fallen angel as she summoned a pink spear of corrupted holy energy and throw it. Naruto crushed and summoned banishing shift, before slashing the at the air in front of Issei, a portal appeared before him and ate the spear, Naruto charged at the fallen angel and jumped in the air. Like ill let you touch me you half blood scum, yelled the fallen angel. He summoned lightning into his hand, half blood or not I am still more than a match for you bitch, lightning claw, yelled Naruto. The fallen angel looked at Naruto and jumped just out of range of the initial hit, but thanks to a secondary effect anything within three meters of Naruto's body could be electrocuted, the sparks jumped out and hit the fallen angel making her scream in pain, she fell to her knees. Issei managed to come out of his stupor for a moment, Yuma-chan, yelled Issei as he took a few steps only for a hand to land on his shoulder. Turning around he saw Rias Gremory standing there with a frown on her face. Rias Senpei. You need to get O, oh, started Issei concerned for his upperclassmen. Sleep, said Rias inducing a sleeping spell on Issei making him fall back into her arms. You've overstepped what I will and won't allow fallen angel San. Know that as of this moment you've made my personal list of those who I will, said Rias with narrowed eyes. Yuma looked at Naruto and then at Rias before cursing, she could probably take on the boy and maybe win, but both him and the heiress of Gremory was out of her power range, crouching a bit she took to the skies. Get back here crow bitch! yelled Naruto, I am not fool enough to take on two devils of your caliber, remember my name Gremory and servant of Gremory, my name is Rainer and the next time we meet I will send you both to the afterlife one thousand times, said Rainer though gritted teeth. Naruto pulled his sword back and channeled his lightning into it, before he could unleash the attack Rayanray flow off, leaving Naruto and Rias alone with the sleeping Issei, Naruto turned to Rias who glared at him, Naruto returned the favor. I think you and I need to talk, and I am summoning your master to this meeting since you overstepped your boundaries in my territory, said Rias. What about the kid? Asked Naruto, don't worry about Issei, I'll take care of him in the morning, said Rias you know where my headquarters is, I will see you there along with the others in 15 minutes. Once Rias vanished Naruto sighed in annoyance, this was just perfect. Location. Kuo Town Place. Kuo Academy, or Clubhouse. Time. 
2010 The club room interior is a wood-paneled room with Victorian-style couches and chairs along the walls. One side is set up to be able to be used as a bath, and a large Gremory family magic circle is also there to allow teleportation to and from clients. Honestly it was quite a quaint little place that was seemingly homely, although that wasn't quite the atmosphere at the moment, especially with Rias currently releasing a ministerial amount of her power to make it clear that she was pissed off at the moment. Mio sighed as she stood before Rias with Naruto a step behind her. Rias sat behind her desk with a Kano to her right as well as two additions to the group. Standing guard at the door was Rias, Knight, Yuto Kiba and her, Rook, Taju Kaniko. Kaniko wasn't very tall, standing at only 46, she could have easily been mistaken as a middle schooler. White hair in a short bob cut, she also wears a black cat-shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair, and gold eyes. She wore the girl's uniform without the shoulder cape. Kiba a handsome young man with short blonde hair, blue eyes, he was only a few inches shorter than Naruto, wearing a black blazer with white accents over a white, long-sleeved dress shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, matching black pants, and brown dress shoes. Eris Gremory why have I been summoned before you? Asked Mio deciding that it was best to do this formally. Rias glared at Mio, daughter of Gremory. You servant overstepped his boundary when he interfered in a matter that I was personally handling, said Rias. Mio looked at Naruto with wide eyes, Naruto-kun, you didn't interfere in the affairs of another territory did you? asked Mio. Interfering in another devil's human world territory was a crime, especially when the person was the heir, heiress without permission, even for Naruto to visit was a bit of a starch, had Naruto been a member of another family then it would have needed permission to enter her zone because Naruto was a member of the Gremory family by his status as Queen Tamiyo was the only reason he was allowed to enter into the. If I didn't interfere that kid would have died, said Naruto. Regardless of what you did, Akano did tell me that you knew that I was personally handling the situation, the only reason I haven't punished you is. Punish him. Growled Mio, you may be my cousin and heiress to the clan but Naruto acted in accordance to the Human Devil Preservation Act as created by the Satans when they came into power. Yes and according to that same act Naruto should NT have interfered in my official business, I knew about the fallen angels, but didn't act as I was waiting for them to disrupt the ceasefire. Naruto grit his teeth, so you were planning on letting him die, asked Naruto. Rias looked at him, I couldn't interfere, the fact of the matter is, I was going to approach Issei and ask him to become my pawn. Whatever he has inside of him attracted the attention of the fallen angels who snuck into my territory, how long before he attracted the attention of the Norse? The angels? The Shinto? You may not think much of me of Naruto, but I won't allow my territory to become a battleground, said Rias. Naruto looked at Rias, before bowing, Hi, Eris Gremory, said Naruto. Rias sat back in her chair, considering that you were acting in what you thought was in the best interest of of House Gremory, I'll let this incident slide under the condition that I may call upon you to act on my behalf two times, said Rias. Mio glared at Rias, that is acceptable Eris Gremory, said Mio. Rias nodded before smiling, now that that is settled, I insist that you both stay the night as my personal guests. Wed be honored, said Mio bowing to her cousin, my little brother can stay with me, said Akano. Rias smiled, very well, it's quite late and I still need to get in touch with Issei by Monday, said Rias. Location. Kuo Academy Place. Akino's Apartment Time, 2200. Akino walked into her room using a towel to dry her hair, she wore a pure white kimono, once they had arrived at Akino's apartment he went right to the bathroom to change, Akino had prepared some clothes and then managed to catch Naruto doing his sit-ups. Akano looked at her brother with a blush and rubbed her thighs together, keep it together Akano, one day Naruto Otto will have his rather wicked way with you, and you can be a masochist slut to your heart's content, thought Akano. Ototo, are you going to come to bed? asked Akano as she sat on the bed. Naruto got up and nodded, he walked over to the closet and was about to grab a cover, but was stopped by Akano, Naruto turned to Akano as she threw herself into his arms, Naruto caught Akano in a hug. Akano said Naruto, please Naruto Ototo, don't leave me alone tonight, I don't want you to leave hating me, said Akano. I could never hate you Akano Ne chan we may not always see eye to eye, but you are the last member of our family that I have, I'll never hate you, said Naruto with a gentle smile. Promise? asked Akano, cross my heart, said Naruto. Seal it with a kiss, said Akano, 
May our family forever live in bliss, finished Naruto. Naruto leaned down to kiss Akano on forehead, only her her to move and lock lips with Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened and that gave Akano a chance to slip her tongue into Naruto's mouth and explore it. Naruto pushed back and managed to get into Akino's mouth, before his arms moved from around her arms and moved to her ass. Naruto grabbed handfuls making Akano moan as Naruto picked her up. Akano wrapped her legs around Naruto's waist as he walked her over to the bed. The siblings broke the kiss with a thin sting of saliva connecting them, both were panting hard. That was my first real kiss, said Akano with a small smile. Naruto looked away from his older sister. Sorry about that Akano, I don't know what came over me, if I had NKOWN you were saving your first kiss. Akano chuckled as she put a finger to his lips, it's fine Ototo, well I have an idea, especially if what I am feeling is any indication, said Akano as she raised a hand and placed it on his face. You know I can't take you Akano, not now at least, said Naruto. Akano chuckled and kissed Naruto lightly on the lips, if you did it so easily I'd be disappointed no matter how good it would feel, said Akano, besides I plan to keep you to your promise. Promise? asked Naruto. Akano smiled, nothing, let's get some sleep, said Akano. Naruto and Akano kissed one more time before they laid down and instantly went to sleep, while it wasn't what she wanted, Akano let out a content breath as her mind drifted into the depths of slumber Akano faded off to sleep, satisfied with Naruto's wrapping her in a protective embrace. Mio awoke in the guest room of Rias Kondo and yawned, she looked out the window and saw that the sun wasn't too high so it was probably around 8 or 9, getting up she opened the door and walked out to go to the kitchen, she couldn't feel Rias' presence in the apartment, that told her that she was most likely dealing with that human, Mio went to the fridge and started to gather food for a quick breakfast of bacon and eggs, as she cooked her thoughts went back to last night. Devil politics were almost as bad as human politics and needlessly complicated. No it was worse, because of the way the Satan and Devil Council operated. It was strange, while the Satans ruled the Devil's section of the underworld. The Council had a considerable amount of leverage to keep the four great Mao in check. It didn't help matters that the great King Bael had such considerable political and natural power that the Bael clan wasn't even part of the Devil Council but could influence the either the Satans or the Council into almost any way they wanted, honestly it was just a headache, when it came to inner clan politics that was a bit cleaner, you had the head of the clan, the clan representative to the Devil Council, the clan council, the heiress, heir to the clan, the actual clan members, the 26 legions that swore alliance to the Gremory, and finally their servants. Since Mio's own father, Wilbert was the younger brother to Rios' own father. Her father should technically be the heir apparent should anything happen to Duke Zeoticus. But that wasn't the case as they were only half-brothers since their father had a second wife not of the Gremory clan at the time and came from the extinct Rain clan. That didn't matter when it came to the fact that when it came to battle prowess and SS in combat Wilbert showed his S with gravity magic and with the births of Mio and Maria it looked like gravity magic would be integrated into the clan magic soon. The same could be said for the power of destruction that Sirzex, Rias and Milikas. Things only got more complicated from there, since Rias and Milikas were from the main family of the Gremory they were heiress primary and heiress secondary, Mio was an heiress candidate and could challenge Rias for the title or heiress primary, while she could challenge Milikas for his position he was just a child at the moment and wouldn't even consider the title for a few more years to come, no the title for heiress was one day going to be a fight between Rias and Mio. When it came to raw magical power Mio and Rias were about evenly matched. Political and strategic knowledge was in Rias' favor. Of course it would be considering who her brother was. When it came to their peerages, Mio was confident that her group was much stronger than Rias' own. Even if Rias had access to her sealed bishop, he wouldn't make a lick of difference. Naruto alone could beat Kiba and Kaneko in a 2v1, Akano in a 1v1, and probably Rias if he really wanted to. The tipping factor was the prize at the end of the day, the contract. Sometime before Rias and Mio came into the world the Fenex and Gremory clans thought that it would be a good idea to merge the power of destruction and the power to seek treasure to the immortal flames, however this plan was thrown for a loop when Mio exhibited the ability to manipulate gravity, one. That got the two clans talking about what would be more beneficial to the devil society at large. The debate was a mo point as the contract clearly stated that the heir, heiress primary was to marry the youngest child of the opposite gender of the main Fenex line, that meant that it would have to the youngest Fenex male or the young female, 
Of course they tried to renegotiate the contract to where both would marry, basically Riser becoming Gremory and the second son would help revive the Rame line and territories, needless to say Wilbert shut that down pretty quickly. While Mio was sure she could not only convince the council and Duke Gremory that she was a better heiress she didn't want to deal with the asshole that was Riser Fenex and his harem of shameless sluts. Sure it was the pot calling the kettle black considering her own relationship and position to her queen. But she knew that Riser had a habit of trading his girls when he grew tired of them. Before breaking them, his two longest consistent pieces were his queen, Yubaluna from a pureblood clan with a high affinity for explosive magic, and a former member from the Fenex's twenty legions, she was a rook if she remembered correctly, while she could possibility beat Riser in a raiding game she didn't want to risk it on the off chance he was able to pull some bullshit out his ass, she also wasn't willing to subject her friends and peerage to that mon's lusts and desires. No, Mia was content to wait until the outcome of said battle, she was 100% sure that it would come to blows before Rias accepted it, once Riser married Rias, the marriage contract was filled and she would be free to swoop in and take the throne for herself as it were, all she had to do was sit and wait. Mio finished her breakfast and washed out her dishes, once finished she walked over to Rios closest and chose some clothes, thanks to them being the same size it was pretty easy to find a pair of blue jean booty shorts and a yellow tank that was a match for her favorites at home. Mio went to sit on the couch as two circles appeared in the room, in the first circle was Naruto and Akano and in the second was Rias and Issei. Rias. Why did you bring that human here? Asked Mio. Issei. Please show them said Rias as she appeared in the room. Issei nodded as he made two pairs of wings appear on his back, Naruto looked at Issei with a glare. What the hell dumbass? You just made a deal with the freaking devil man! Naruto yelled in his mind. Rias smiled at Naruto, I explained to him the benefits of being a devil, the extended lifespan and the fact that devils are allowed to have harems, said Rias. That's right. Now I am going to bang all the chicks I want from school laughed Issei. Akano laughed, my my, isn't my new kohai full of energy? teased Akano. This isn't a coincidence that Akano and Naruto are here is it? asked Mio. Rias nodded, Naruto I am using one of my favors, said Rias. Naruto let out a whistle, damn you work fast, said Naruto. Rias went on ignoring Naruto's comment, I want you to force Issei's sacred gear to the surface, it should nt take more than a simple shock to jolt it awake, said the heiress of Gremory. I was sure that you were going to save you your favors for something more dire, said Naruto. Rias glared at Naruto, ill handle that problem with my own power, said Rias. Naruto snorted, sure, said Naruto as he walked up to Issei. Hey man I never got your name, said Issei putting out his left hand, I am Hyodo Issei, pawn, to Rias Gremory. Naruto looked at Issei's hand, it's Naruto, I am the younger brother of Akano and the queen, of Mio Gremory, said Naruto taking the hand. Queen huh? That's not every manly, said Issei, it's okay. Nither is this, said Naruto as he sent lightning thought his hand and into Issei's body. Issei screamed in pain as Naruto shocked him, he tired to release the grip, but Naruto's hand was like a steel vice, refusing to let go, it didn't help that the pain brought Issei to his knees in seconds, it was probably 100 times more painful than anything Issei ever felt. Rias looked on in slight disappointment. If this level of power was anything to go by Issei would need to be trained, a lot before he was of any use to her. It took a minute or two before a thick red gauntlet appeared on Issei's hand, by the time it did Naruto released Issei's hand and the boy turned devil fell to the ground out cold. Akano walked up and poked Issei, she let out a small laugh. Impressive Ototo. You knocked him out cold, said Akano smirking at Naruto. Rias cursed, I was sure that his gear was stronger than a twice critical, said Rias. It is, it's been a long time Diedrig, said Hilda making a silver gauntlet along with the glowing green gem appear on Naruto's arm. Hilda? Asked Naruto, Brynhildr, the last time I saw you was during the Roman era, also that stung a bit, said Diedrig. The girls all froze seeing this. Hyodo Issei and below average male at best, a super pervert with an obsession with boobs the likes that no one had seen in years had a Longinus class gear, not just any Longinus, but the boosted gear, this meant that Issei was the red dragon emperor of this generation. Anytime a dragon emperor appeared they went on to become pillars of strength within their respective lifespans. Alexander the Great had been the red dragon of his time, Leonidas, 
The king of the Spartans had been a Red Dragon Emperor and so many others, but like many who held the title of Red Dragon Emperor their time usually ended up being quite short once the gear appeared, it was established that they had as much as 1 to 100 years to live, the fact that Rius had managed to get the Red Dragon Emperor with only six pawns was a blessing as well as a cruise, too. Hilda began to laugh, unbelievable. You really do have the worst luck ever, getting reborn into such a weakling, and not just any weakling, but a pervert at that, laughed Hilda. Laugh it up Hilda. I seem to recall that you preferred the company of your sisters to those of men, said Diedrich with a snort. Hilda stopped laughing and if the two gears had bodies Naruto was sure that she would be glaring at the red dragon. Enough both of you. Red dragon I reincarnated your host as my newest servant, that in turn makes me the master to both of you, said Rias. Rias, started Mio, a flare of power rocked the entire room, Mio, Akano, and Rias all went to their knees, while Naruto was only able to remain standing because he had his own gear out, but even he felt the power of the dragon. Let's get one thing straight Gremory, I am not your servant, and while the perverted kid may be my host know that should you harm my partner in any way before our destined fight with the white dragon emperor then I will do everything in my power to you, said Diedrich with all the malice he could muster. Okay Naruto liked this guy, hey red dragon, can you stop that, you're hurting them with your power, said Naruto. The pressure let up as the gauntlet vanished from Issei's hand, this allowed the girls to get up, Rias took a seat at the bar before summoning a glass of wine and a bottle, before taking a sip of the delicate and sweet alcohol, Akano and Mio took their own glasses and took sips of the wine, Naruto grabbed Issei by his collar, before throwing him onto the couch. That, that was amazing, said Mio, so what's going to happen now? asked Akano. Well, I'll have to let Issei know about the boosted gear, that way I can, started Rias. You will do no such thing, said Naruto, what do you mean? asked Rias. Naruto turned to her, it's bad enough that you had me awaken a sentient class gear, which can be dangerous by itself, but because it's a Longinus Issei's body can't handle that level of power right off the back, no, it has to naturally evolve to where Diedrich will reveal himself to Issei, said Naruto. Naruto-kun has a point Rias, as it is Issei doesn't even have the power to keep it active for more than a few minutes at bees, said Mio crossing her hands under her breasts. That show of force was all Diedrich managed to use, before he had to go and rest I say it will be about two or three weeks before he appears again, and even then he won't reveal himself to Issei until he gets over his initial level of power, considering Issei isn't even an F-class he has a long way to go, said Naruto. F-class? asked Akano, Naruto-kun created a class ranking system that shows the overall threat level to someone, he calls it his bingo book, said Mio. Interesting. Where would you, you rank me? asked Rias. Naruto looked at her, I'd rather not say, it would damage your fragile ego, said Naruto. Excuse me. I'll have you know I don't have a fragile ego, said Rias. Naruto summoned a book and opened a specific page, all right just remember I gave you an out, said Naruto before handing it to Rias. Rais looked at the book and was shocked at how detailed it was, her height, her weight, but it was her states that caught her interest. Strength. Three-tenths speed. 4 tenths magic, 6 tenths combat, 4 tenths. Technique. 4 tenths intelligence, 8 tenths while normally Rias wouldn't be considered a dangerous opponent her intellect along with her familial magic, power of destruction makes her a formidable opponent, however due to her lack of speed and mostly relaying on her familial power as well as neglecting her physical training Rias isn't as dangerous as she could be, another weakness she has is over-reliance on her strategies not realizing that everyone has a plan until the first punch is thrown. Final ranking. Hi Elo D. Rias looked at the book and then back at Naruto, if she was ranked this low then, then. Oh don't get it confused Rias, said Naruto as if cutting off her thoughts, all the big names in the supernatural world as well as those I personally know are in that book, even your cousin Syroorg is in that book, but he's ranked much higher than you, he's at least a B-class threat in my books, I am not even sure if I went full out would I be able to beat him. Rias handed the book back to Naruto, she bit her lip, stopping herself from asking what she would need to do to get stronger, but her pride stopped her from asking, in that moment she realized that Naruto had her pegged. If you'll excuse us heiress Gremory my queen and I have been away from my territory long enough, we must get back, said Mio giving a small bow to Rias as did Naruto. Rias looked at her cousin and nodded, right then, safe travels then, said Rias. 
As Naruto and Mio left the apartment Naruto cast one last glance at Akano, he opened his mouth to speak, but shook his head. The master of the castle sat back swirling his class of wine as he looked at his prize, abducting her on her way from America and back to the Gremory territory had been a risk, but one he had accepted without worry. His prize was actually the favorite concubine of Wilbert Gremory, a petite beautiful woman with long silver hair and purple eyes, purple horns, and pointy ears she wore a white lacy dress, a choker and two black ribbons in her hair. His prize glared at him with pure hate in her eyes, when Wilbert finds out that you have taken me hostage he will destroy you and the entire demon lord faction for this transgression, said Sheila. Her capture laughed, my dear by the time Wilbert can even get away from the council it will be too late to stop me, until such a time as I can move forward I will have my people entertain you girls, said the madman. Four shadows appeared in the chamber all kneeled before him, we won't fail you Lord Zolgir, said the leader of the trio. Yuki and Kurumi walked down the street on their way back home. Zest had asked them to pick up some stuff for dinner for a grand feast for Mio and Naruto's return. Yuki wore a, a maroon blazer, pink shirt that showed off her tight-toned stomach, a tan skirt with ha white belt and a pair of heeled boots, Kurumi wore a sleeveless light blue hoodie the, the actual hood and pocket being white, black spandex shorts, and white shoes both girls held a bag of groceries in their hands as they walked though the neighborhood back to the house, sure they could have just teleported but it was nice and sunny and they wanted to spend some time with each other. I can't wait for Naruto-sama to return, said Yuki thinking of the things she would do with him, maybe try that new position that she read about online. Kurumi took a bite out of her cinnamon roll and looked at her sister, you're only saying that because you want to do perverted things with Naruto, said Kurumi. What's wrong with that? I am Naruto-sama's lover, just as Maria and Zest, before long both you and Naruse will be his lovers as well, said the bluette. Kurumi snored, yeah right, I am not looking forward to getting knocked up right now, thank you but no thanks anal slut, said Kurumi with no real bite to her words. Yuki looked at her sister as she took a bite of her roll again, before she could chew on it Yuki swooped in and kissed Kurumi, Kurumi blushed, before before she could do anything Yuki forced her mouth open and used her tongue to scoop the piece out and eat it herself. Kurumi looked at her sister with a heavy blush, hentai, yelled Kurumi, one. Yuki smiled at her sister, thanks for the meal and the compliment, said Yuki. Slow clapping stopped the duo making them turn around, standing there was a man, he wasn't very tall, probably as tall as Yuki, short green hair that was in a box up, a pink shirt, blue jean pants, and a gold chain. Such emotion between sisters, it's enough to break one's heart, said the man. Kurumi and Yuki stopped joking and realized that the street was empty, a barrier. Yuki dropped her bag and summoned her katana, Sakuya, while Kurumi summoned her own gauntlet. How did he set one up without us noticing? Kurumi thought to herself, as she gathered energy to her left arm. The man held up his hands, whoa, whoa whoa. This isn't the time to fight, I am currently here to deliver a massage, said the man. A message? Asked Yuki not dropping her guard, a message from who? Why from my master, he has forbidden me from saying his name until you've seen what is inside for yourself, said the demon. The man pulled out an envelope that was about as large as a sheet of paper, but was a tad thicker, he set it on the ground and backed up, Kurumi walked forward and picked it up, opening it her eyes wind in shock. She looked at the man with a fire burning up inside of her as the ground under her breast as she unleashed a blast of wind. Where are you keeping her? asked Kurumi summoning a gauntlet that helped her manipulate wind, too. The man smirked, that would be telling wouldn't it Bambino, said the man. Kurumi had enough of this and aimed her left hand at him, air cannon, yelled Kurumi firing off a ball of compressed air. The man looked at the attack, before taking a classical boxing stance and throw out a punch. The punch unleashed a blast of compressed air that collided with the air cannon, the two winds hit each other, before exploding in a tornado, as the winds died down the man raised his forearms and blocked Yuki as she slashed at his arms. A spark appeared on his forearms Yuki's eyes widened, before she jumped backwards and put her hands on her sword. Why didn't you cut him to ribbons? Asked Kurumi, his arms, they are hard, said Yuki. Who are you? Asked Kurumi, the man chuckled as he made a show of crossing her left arm over his chest, while throwing his right arm out and bowing, I am a demon mercenary, I am an orc and my name is simply Damien, I am a simple messenger, and now that my message has been delivered I must part. 
Oh and if we should cross paths again under different circumstances, I will you both without fail, said Damien as he jumped backwards to vanish. Yuki looked at her sister as they both released control of their weapons, what was in the envelope? asked Yuki. Whoever he's working for, they have Shelia san hostage, said Kurumi as she looked at the picture on the ground. A picture of Shelia in a cell, location, Tokyo, Shinjuku district. Place. Naruse Manor Time, 1530 Dam, 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 Damn it! yelled Mio as she kicked the table several times, before she broke it with her abnormal strength. Mio calm down, said Naruto. Mio turned to Naruto with a glare. How can I calm down when some asshole has kidnapped Shelia Ka San? yelled Mio. Maria wasn't doing so hot either as she was shaking in rage. Kurumi was by her side whispering to her to try and keep her calm. The letter and photos were put it out that Mio was to present herself as well as her peerage to the location that was specified in the letter within a day or Shelia would be ed, slowly, for a succubus to die as slowly was to starve them of intimacy. While Sukbui got the majority of their energy from Ra they could still feed of of things like hugs, kisses, from dreams, and the like, was just how they got the majority of their energy. Succubi were the literal attention whores. Whoever kidnapped her opened themselves up to an assault from not only the legions of Gremory, but also the Succubi queen herself, stated Maria. Ka San has a high enough rank of arch to wear an attack on her as an attack om all Succubi, but we need to act fast or we won't be able to save her. 3. You girls get a message to Wilbert Sama. Tell him that Shelia Sama is currently in danger and we're going to handle it, said Naruto as he made his way to front door. Where are you going? asked Mio. I have to go and get some information from one of out sources. Naruto pulled out his phone and sent a quick message, four simple words. We need to talk. Location Tokyo, Shinjuku District. Place Park time. 1800 Naruto sat on a park bench as he awaited Lars. He had been waiting about 10 minutes now and was starting to get seriously pissed off. When Lars gets here I am going to him, thought Naruto. Naruto jumped up and out of the way as the bench he was on was obliterated. By a punch from a large troll, Naruto snorted as he looked at the monster before him. He was easily over 10 feet tall, a pretty small troll. Dark red skin, a simple cloth to protect his modatsi. And long white hair. Naruto held out his hand and unleashed a lightning javelin, the attack struck true, the troll yelled in pain, but was still standing even if he staggered a bit, Naruto summoned banishing shift as he got a better look at the troll, the troll touched his chest where the attack his, he was wounded, but not nothing fatal, trolls like the orge cousins had notoriously hard skin and were quite resistant to most elemental magics. Naruto prepared to slash the troll into oblivion but stopped his wires nearly wrapped completely around his neck and pulled him into a tree, Naruto began to choke with the only thing keeping his alive was his now bloody hand. Well it seems that Lars was correct and that a little devil was out here all alone, came a voice from the trees. Naruto managed to lift his eyes and looked at a demon shinobi dressed in all black with only his red eyes visible, Naruto swung his sword and severed the wires, landing on his feet Naruto coughed a bit as he manged to get his get his bearing. Demon mercenary. Cage and demon mercenary. Grog, although you won't live long enough to remember our names, said the demon shinobi. Please, said Naruto standing, UF class rejects barely got the drop on me, and as it were I could still kick your asses eight ways to Sunday with an extra serving of foot. Cage held up his hand with his tiger claws and charged at Naruto as Grog ran behind him. Naruto snorted Naruto blocked the attack. Naruto raised his left hand making a hand signs. Cage's eyes widened seeing this, how did he know the secret shadow arts? It's impossible you can't know demon ninja arts, yelled Cage. Naruto smirked, you're not the only one with shinobi ss pal, shadow clone jutsu, said Naruto. A figure appeared behind Cage with a handful of lighting but jumped at Gorg, he gripped Grog by the head. Iron lightning claw, yelled the clone and he increased his grip power and crushed Grog's head while obliterating his brain with the lighting. Cage glared at Naruto, while there was no love loss between himself and Grog he was a comrade and Naruto would pay for his transgressions, disengaging from the fight Cage went to create more wires, before Cage could finish creating the wires the clone appeared behind him and gripped him in full Nelson, sending lightning to his blade Naruto gripped it with both hands. Disappear from my sight trash. Fox hunter. Yelled Naruto unleashed a lightning fox that had traces of void magic in it. 
The apparition and manifestation of Naruto's attack ripped the cage leaving not a trace of him behind. Naruto allowed banishing shift to vanish as he looked at his cut up hand, before he felt his neck, he had small wounds, but nothing to bad. Had I known that you would dispatch them so easily I wouldn't have given them the information I did, said Lars appearing. If it wasn't for you I wouldn't have wasted my time, said Naruto looking at Lars. Lars removed his mask and smirked at Naruto, sorry Himejima, but I needed to make sure to cover my tracks, Zolgir was keeping an eye on me, said Lars. So these demon mercs, I assumed he hired a few of them. Not quite, the ones who work for him are fanatics of his style of rule, you see the demon lord faction don't think we should be confined to the underworld, even though the satans and modern demon faction have managed to replicate the human world quite nicely, in their eyes we should rule the humans, taking what we want, eating them and all that old school stuff. What do I have to worry about? Asked Naruto, honestly nothing much, those two were quite weak, I believe you called them F-class rejects, no the other two are more powerful than them, close to our own levels, Damien an orc that has quite strong defensive magic and then Bella the viper, I haven't seen her fight, but from my understanding she's never lost a battle before and has a quite potent venom that s quickly upon injection, said Lars. Naruto put a hand on his chin at this, so two more mercs and Zolgir himself, Zolgir's at least a mid B class threat, if I got Wilbert Sama involved along with the legions, no that's not an option, said Naruto dismissing the thought. Why not? Asked Lars looking at his friend, rival, clearly if you're considering it then it is. Naruto shook his head, it's not that simple, Shelia Sama isn't a devil. In fact she's only married to Wilbert Sama in the eyes of the Succubi nation. To the greater devil community she's nothing but a plaything to him, ever since the death of Ash Sama, Shelia Sama has acted as Mio's mother and Wilbert's wife, in fact I can't recall him ever having another woman on his arm besides Shelia Sama. The Devil Council will use this as ammunition to have the Gremory Elders in Council remove him from his position as clan repetitiveness, no we have to handle this at our level, said Naruto. Lars scoffed at this, politics always complicate a good bloodbath, said Lars as he vanished. Location. Gremory Territory Place, Gremory Castle, Wilbert's Office. Time. Late evening, 3, the office in the western section of Gremory Castle was dominated by bookshelves books, and other such things, in the northern corner of the room was a fireplace that was currently roaring. Above the fireplace was a picture of three women, an artwork he had commissioned for this room. By the fireplace were a set of Victorian recliners with a small table in between them as well as a tea table on either side of them, the large desk that sat Cattercorner had a modern computer and three pictures, one was of Mio and the other was of Maria, the final picture was of himself, Shelia, Lucia, Mio, and Maria when they were all younger, as strange as the picture was due to the fact that Lucia was taller than her mother and most people would think she was the mother they were happy. The man currently sitting behind the desk was the younger brother of Zeocius Wilbert Gremory, veteran of both the Three Factions War and the Devil Civil War, a well-built man with red hair and matching colored eyes and tattoos that appears to be on a portion of his face. While he didn't show it Wilbert was very worried about his wife, even as he worked on the paperwork for the upcoming council meeting and reports to the elders, the meeting Morrigan had called was only supposed to last a week, now here they were going on two weeks and she was messing, worse yet his adopted daughter Lucia was currently in the hospital after being attacked, whoever attacked them had to be quite strong as both Shelia and Lucia could use space dimensional type magic. His worry for his wife never left his mind, Wilbert paused as he looked up. Standing in the doorway was his elder brother, Zeoticus, Zeoticus has the appearance of a middle-aged, handsome-looking man with long crimson red hair that is tied in a loose ponytail with a black hairband, he has bright blue eyes just like his two children, Sirzex and Rius Gremory, he also has a short and red beard or stubble, he wore a white suit over a black shirt, and black shoes, in his hands was the devil's brew one of the strongest drinks known to devilkind. Zeo, said Wilbert a bit surprised to see his brother. Zeoticus smiled and held up the bottle and summoned two glasses, care for a drink wool, I know you need one after what's been happening, said Zeoticus. Wilbert took a cup as his brother took a seat, what Zeoticus was referring to was the fact that the elders and Gremory Council had forbidden him from releasing the five legions he had control of to search for Shelia. Had she been a devil they would have allowed it, but as she was just a succubus and his bed warmer they didn't see the point. Zeoticus knew that his brother had only ever loved two women in his entire life. Ash and now Shelia, 
When Ash had died shortly after the birth of Mio it had nearly broken him. He had found comfort and even love in Shelia. Shelia had even claimed that Wilbert was her destined one. Zeoticus loved his little brother and throw his full support behind him but even he as the head of the House of Gremory couldn't overrule both the council and the elders. The only way that would happen is as their father took his side, but their father was quite the difficult man to get a hold of. I am worried about Shelly a brother, and the council's words, they, said Wilbert. I understand brother and I am already making an appeal to the council and even calling Sirzex to see if he can help, said Zeoticus. You know Sirzex can. T get involved, head face great backlash if he did, said Wilbert. Then it's a good thing I am not asking him to get involved and only come to a nice dinner with the head of the council and elders, said Zeoticus with a smile. Wilbert smiled. Thank you brother. Just as the men polished off their glasses and circle appeared between then, out of the circle came a little rabbit with horns, Mio's familiar, chabby a horned demon rabbit. Is that little Mio's familiar? asked Zeoticus. Yes, I didn't think that she would send me a letter, it must be something offical if she did, said Wilbert Chabby, in his mouth was a letter. Wilbert took the letter and opened it, as he read it his control over his energy exploded, Zeoticus got up and out of the chair. Well what it is? asked Zeotuix, brother forgive me, but you have thirteen hours to get the council to agree to allowing me to go and save my wife and children or I will challenge for leadership and do things my way. And we both know what my way is, the man gravity bows to said Wilbert taking the bottle and draining it before breaking it on the ground and he left the room. Zeo looked at where the letter was and picked it up. Father I know this letter won't find you in good health as Shelia Ka-sama has been missing for a week now. Had I known beforehand I would have done everything in my power to help you, it is with a heavy heart that I inform you that she has been taken by someone claiming to be from the demon faction. We have a location and are to meet her sea captors in twelve hours to exchange myself for her. I know this isn't something you would want us trading our lives for each other, but for Maria and Shelia Kasama, I would do just that. Please don't worry, we will handle things. Love me OP, S. Maria says that she loves you. Zio cursed as he rushed out the room. If the council didn't agree after this, then the Gremory territory would likely explode in civil war. Thanks for watching.